Hey, hello. Check, 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 check. Are we off again? I said check, check. We had it working, I thought. Hello. Hello. Check, check. Good evening, everybody. That's so weak. I said, good evening, everybody. All right, welcome back to the Movement Monday Nights where we come together every Monday night right here at 1400 Norway Avenue, Norway Avenue Church of Christ. We meet you as a group of people all wanting more from life, believing that God is the answer, amen? amen. I said we believe that God is the answer, amen? amen. All right, so we're going to have a good, good time tonight. Tonight's message which is about love. We're going to talk about situationships, which is really a hostage situation. We're going to talk a lot about dating, and a lot of we have a lot of fun with this message, and uh, some of you guys have seen the parts of it before, but it is so much fun. We're going to have such a great time tonight. Yes, you did take me hostage, Miss Helen Meadows, or I did you, one or the other. It, it usually works that way. The hostage situation reverses itself. <laughs> have you ever noticed how that works? Well, you, apparently you guys have never been in one. <laughs> All right. Um, before we get started tonight, my very good friend Anthony Stradwick from the Shepherd's House and Program, and he's with a new program. I'm going to let him tell you all about that. He wants to give you guys a, a bit of information. That um, Anybody in here recovering from addiction tonight? <laughs> okay. Well, then, if you're part of one of these programs, they're... Most of them, well, we do, we're going to require that you go get a job and learn that you become a productive member of society, learn how to stand on your own two feet and support yourself, that he's part of a program that they're going to help train you and employ you for 30 hours a week for $9, $10 an hour. Well, before I start, I want to know, is there anybody in this house excited about Jesus tonight? I mean, are we excited about Jesus tonight? See, most of you don't know that it took Jesus to turn my life around. Without him, I never could have made it. That's why I wear this shirt, because most people want to know what my recovery program is. Jesus. But yes. If, if you just want to take a moment to come out so we can get some information, what we're really trying to do is one of the things that, that everyone is starting to realize that one of the biggest obstacles that we're facing is having an opportunity to be able to get into employment. And one of the things when they, off, when, when they offered me this position, we didn't want to offer minimum wage, so we offered $9 an hour because we want to really help folks try to get into some really good situations. So if you're one of those folks who are, you're not working right now, it's going to be a two-month program. It's a way that you can have some, some money in your pocket, take care of some things. Plus, we want to try to help you get into a place where you can have full-time employment. That's really what this is about. There's opportunities if you want to go back to school, different things. So uh, we just hope that me and Melanie will be out there. That if you get an opportunity, just stop and see us. We're trying to get some things set up this week so we can get some folks moving if you're interested. So we're not going to take up much more time. The most important thing we came here for is who? Jesus. Jesus. So let's get our praise and let's get our Jesus on, all right? Give it up one more time for Anthony Stradwick of Shepherd's House. I've 
guy can break dance too. I'm not kidding you. Like nobody's business, man. He could dance. Um, are you guys ready for a good time tonight? So you guys know every every week usually we have um, a different genre of praise and worship from a rapper to Christian rock to traditional praise and worship to we even have bluegrass sometimes now that but every first Monday of the month Aaron had pointed out to me where we do a graduation that he said hey I really think you should skip praise and worship on, on the first Monday of the month and so what we do is we do a simple graduation for Lifehouse try to keep them real short but we want you guys to know that listen this is not a Lifehouse deal that any program that decides to come to the movement if you guys don't do an official graduation we invite you to do one here that if you even don't do certificates, we can help you and make a certificate with you and add your logo to it and all that and put all the wording that needs to be in there for the time frame, whatever it needs to be. So we'd like you to do your graduation here as well if you don't do one, okay? And then we recognize uh, periods of sobriety for everyone, um, for all periods of sobriety. Um, something I need to bring to your guys' attention that it is July the 1st. Three weeks from today, the 22nd of July on Monday night, that we will not be here. We will be at the river. And we will be having a huge rock concert with Seventh Day Slumber, Silverside, and um, the Persuaded, three of the largest Christian rock bands in the country. Two of them are on the billboard, actually. If you look them up, two of them made the top ten billboard of Christian rock. And so we're going to have a great time. We'll be at the river, um, at Harris Riverfront, three weeks from tonight. You guys got it? Okay, I'm going to be getting that out on social media. Make sure you share that. Invite somebody to that concert because the gospel will be shared in a way that's just absolutely amazing. That Laura from Silverside has a way to minister into a group. That if you've got people that are a little scared or afraid of church, this is the time you want to get them. That they will definitely get uh, caught up with the music and they will be led to the Lord. Amen? Yeah. All right, so before Daniel gets started with graduation um, every week, we like to make sure that we offer this time for anyone who's never been water baptized to offer you an opportunity to do that. And so what, we, what water baptism is, that is anybody here tonight believe that God is real? Yeah. yeah, 12 of you. There's like 300 people here, 350, 400 people, and like 12 of you. Right? Does anybody here tonight believe there's a God out there? All right. All my atheists left the building. Still about 50 all agnostic, though. I know it. Okay. Huh? And uh, so, so if you're here tonight and you believe that God's real and he's just, anybody here tonight believe Jesus is real and died for you and he's your Savior? Yes. All right. So I know I'm usually preaching to the choir, which is a great thing for me. We have a lot of fun. Of course, we lead a lot of people to Jesus as well. But we believe a next step in your walk, if you've never done it, is water baptism. Tonight we have water if I didn't know that, we have water here. We have plenty of towels and clothes. You don't need anything but you and a willing heart. That water baptism is your next step. Jesus told us to go be baptized, right? And so we call it sealing the deal. And we believe that you're telling everybody in heaven, everybody on earth, and everybody in hell, I'm dead to the old me. And you're literally, just like Jesus died, was buried, and raised again, you too shall die, bury the old you, and raise that water, breaking it with newness of life. Amen? So, is anybody here tonight has never been water baptized or ready to make a decision for God again that has in the past, ready to change your life? Get up out of your seat tonight, right now. Let's go over here to the wall. Just follow right over here. If you're ready to change your life tonight, get up out of your seat. Let's go. All right. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Daniel Purdue to start our graduation that I can interrupt him with baptisms. Give it up for Daniel Purdue. Let's celebrate some long-term recovery tonight. Um, this first group of guys that, uh, that our farm director, Sean Pressgraves, if he'll come up, is going to help me call up our, uh, our farm. Let's give a round of applause for Sean Pressgraves here. So, these guys have been through the life house phase one. We call it the farm. Uh, we grow men there, though, not vegetables. Um, they've been thoroughly through the first five steps. They have at least 60 days sober. Uh, they're prepared to go on and live life. Um, 
with the foundation to build on. It's a tough time. I went through the farm back in 2015. No girls, no cell phones, just recovery in Jesus day in and day out. How's it going? Hey, so this first guy uh, has come through the program and has made amazing strides. I, I knew he was going to do really well when he came in. He's now signed on to, to help other clients as a peer mentor. Mike Christian, please come up. This guy's about the most rednecky guy I've ever met in my life. Um, he's got a big heart, and, I, and I'm, I'm really glad to have met him. Stuart Tingler, come up here. You can tell, just look at him. This guy has proven the fact that, that you can undergo some arduous things in your journey and still come out sober and doing really well. John Martin, please come up. It's one of our St. Louis boys. Uh, when, he, when he came to the program, he had a lot of difficulties and... and he didn't think he was going to make it, but I knew that, that he was made of harder stuff than that. And today he's doing incredibly well. Mr. Herrick, please come up. Love you, man. So this guy's one of the funniest guys I know. He's always been a joy. He brings a smile to everybody in the room, and he's always willing to help people. Brooks, please come up here. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right, before we move on to the full program graduates, we have this month's uh, Certificate of Excellence. Uh, give this out once a month to a resident that gives back a little extra, is always wanting to help out. Uh, this guy's come such a long way. Uh, he's been through some real tough times lately. Not only has he got through it, he's helped his family through it. He's really stepping up and helping people. Wilbert Brown. Next is our, our full program graduates. Uh, they have at least eight months sober. They've been through uh, all 12 steps. Um, they have jobs, uh, handling grown man business on a daily basis. They know what it's like to be sober while taking care of stuff. I'll continue in a minute. Confess to it your mouth. The Bible is clear and said you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. We know that Jesus told us to go in the highways and the byways, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, based on the possession of your heart and the confession from your mouth, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus told us to go in the highways and the byways, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, based on the possession in your heart and confession from your mouth, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Your heart. We just 
just confessed it with your mouth. The Bible is clear and said you shall be saved. We know that Jesus told us to go in the highways and the byways, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, based on the possession in your heart and confession from your mouth, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Confess it with your mouth. The Bible said you shall be saved. We know that Jesus told us to go on the highways and the byways, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, based on the possession of your heart and confession from your mouth, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We know that Jesus told us to go in the highways and the byways, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, based on the possession in your heart and confession from your mouth, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's such a pleasure to be part of this every week. Is there anything like the movement out there? I think we're pretty special, don't you guys? All of us are coming together like this. Huntington may have a big addiction problem, but we got one big solution too, don't we? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so these next guys um, have completed the program. Um, first up, um, this is one of the hardest working little fellows I know. He had three jobs at one point. And I was like, slow down, man. Um, you're here to recover, not to get rich. Um, <laughs> he's done it, though. He works a solid program. I think he's capable of helping people. It may be time for him to grab some sponsees. Nicholas Martin. <laughs> he probably at work. I'm super proud of this next guy. Um, he's come a long way. Uh, he's one of our phase two peer leaders. He's moving back home to an amazing job. Uh, his family's here with him tonight. Thomas Miller. This next one is really special. It's been a long time coming. Um, three years now this kid's been a part of my life. But he's a man now. I'm not going to call him a kid anymore. Um, he's grown into an amazing young man. I'm super excited for what he's going to be capable of in the future. Uh, we got quite the history. At one point he left and... Caused me to be out on the road kicking somebody's car so he wouldn't leave and all kind of crazy stuff. But um, I love him. I'm proud of him. Dustin Himes. So tonight in the graduation process isn't just about Lifehouse, like Rocky said earlier. We want to celebrate everybody's uh, clean time, sober time tonight. Um, we'll start off at 30 days. If you have 30 days sober, stand up. Show it up. There we go. That first month's the hardest one to get. How about 60 days of continuous sobriety? There we go. 90 days, three months. And there we go. All around this place. How about six months? There's our six month people out. There we go. We got some down here. 
How about nine months of continuous sobriety? There we go, Dustin Hahn. How about a year? Who's got a year? There we go, all over this place. Hey, Amen. It's my buddy Mark back there with the year. How about 18 months, a year and a half? There we go. Big John back there. Duffy in the tech room. What about two years? Anybody got two years continuous sobriety? My friend Chris. How about three? I got three. There we go, big man over here. We got three. Uh, four. <laughs> Ashley Keeper. How about five? There's my sister, Crystal. How about six to ten? Who's got six to ten years of continuous sobriety? There we go, back here, Sierra. about 11 to 15. Aaron Smith in the back. 16 to 20. Anybody got over 20? Where's Jim at? There's Jim. How about the most important time of all today? Who's got today? that tonight we come to you as a group of believers asking you to fulfill us, that fill us and fulfill us, that tonight, Lord God, we're here because we choose you, but better yet, tonight we understand and know that you chose us. Lord God, we need you in our lives. The Lord, I pray for every person here, their hearts and their minds are open and receptive to you and your truth, Lord God. As we speak tonight about love, let us most importantly understand how you love us. We so thank you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you. That, Lord, I pray tonight that you would use me, that everything I would do, my mind is of you, my heart is of you, my vocal cords are of you. That what we would do tonight would honor you and bring, make your name great. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, Amen. Amen. I've preached around about this for several different times. Every couple of months, you'll hear something similar. I'll talk on the subject a lot, but I want to talk tonight about love. I'm going to talk about love, and somebody messed my notes up. There we go. I'm going to talk tonight about love and what that means. I want to talk a lot about um, early sobriety dating. And, yeah. Woo, you got you one, didn't you? Yeah. Got me one. He got him a hostage. And uh, I, had, I had me one still. I'm just kidding. I had me a hostage once upon a time. I learned what real love was. She said, mm. <laughs> She said, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, no, we really did. That uh, There was times that she had me hostage and, and times I had her hostage. I don't know who was winning. 
And um, I want to talk tonight about that, that uh, my good friend Will's here tonight, and Will was telling me how many people, if you've been around a little while, this will make sense to you. If you've not been around a little while, you'll see it'll make sense, has said just, I love her, or I love him, No, and are now dead today. No, I'm serious. This is for real, that with good meaning of, of feel good, we, we attempt to try to start out and date and, and invariably is filling that same hole that you used to fill it with with alcohol and drugs. Make sense? All right. So I'll, I'll get into a little more about the dating and hostage situations here in a minute. But I want to talk to you for a few minutes about love tonight. That it was taught to me, a, a great uh, teaching and understanding um, by an old famous Baptist preacher, if you've ever watched TV preaching, an old guy named Charles Stanley has a whole series. It's, it's so old, it's, it's, on D, it's on CD, not even DVD. You can't even watch it, you got to listen to it. And he has like a six-part teaching one. It's called Liberate It to Love and taught me so much. Um, if you've ever heard about the five love languages, and we'll go through some of that tonight. We're going to have a fun journey um, tonight with this, that what love really means. When you say, I love you to someone, what do you really mean? When someone says, I love you to you, what is it you think they mean? Yeah, let that sit in a minute. I can see law. The Bible says see law. If you know what see law means. Um, nobody really knows the true definition of it. We all think it means pause. Right? It's a good place to pause and think and ponder. See law right there. When someone says, I love you. What do you think they mean? Let me tell you what I used to mean, right? Before I truly loved myself, I used to tell people I love you. Now, when I was a kid and younger and I told my mother and father I love you, what I probably meant was you're my mother and father and you take care of me, you nurture me, and so I appreciate the care that you give me so I then intentionally love you. What I meant was I, think, I, I, I appreciate that you take care of me, Right? Does it make sense? You remember? A lot of us have had messy childhoods, though, right? But so, so, so that wrecked your um, life growing up. As you grew up, you didn't quite understand what love meant. But so when I used to say I loved you or my parents said I loved you or I loved you, it was that type of love, right? I, I appreciate you nurturing me. Thank you for taking care of me, right? My daddy was what I used to call Superman. Daddy provided, made sure I always had a roof over our head, had electric, had water, and had food. Most of my friends and kids growing up in inner city Baltimore did not have those, and I'll call them luxuries, because many people don't, right? So that, that was love for me. It was nurturing and caring. It was providing. Later on in life, because I had a, a bad understanding of what love was, and because at six years old, and I told this last week or the week before about my false belief system that was created early on in my life that... Um, my mother had left my father for a very short period, about six months, and my daddy was a very, what I thought to be a good man. So when my mother left my father, I created a false belief system that said, no matter how good you are to her, a woman will run out on you anyway. Ooh. Yeah. So then I then always thought I, I would always look for my out, and I would wreck and cheat and womanize. And so when I used to say, I love you, what I meant was, this is what love was to me. I loved you. And I used to say it to her. I love you. What I meant was, I like what you do for me. I like how you make me feel. I couldn't imagine life without you. I never loved. It was always a manipulation. It was always using someone. Make sense? And so what I finally figured out was I never could love anyone, not even my children, because I was a useless drug addict. I would say, oh, I love my children. I die for my children. If you won't live for your children, you would never die for them. And I couldn't live for my children because I was a hopeless drug addict because I truly didn't love no one because I never truly loved me. Right? 
And so what I mean by that used to, you know, I tell her, hey, I love you. And it'd be like, I was trying to give her a hundred dollar bill. I love you 100. And I kept handing her a five. I'm going, I love you a hundred. And she keep looking at it going, this number, this number right here. Right? Just, he keeps saying that's a hundred. He keeps saying that's a hundred. That's a five, right? You know how it goes, right? I love you 100, and I keep handing her a five. You know why? Because I thought it was 100, but all I had was five. So you would do it over and over and over, right? Because the truth is, I never loved me. Now, what happened and took place for me was, I never loved me, truly loved me, until I had an encounter with God, and I understood God loved me. And I don't think you can love yourself, not true love, till you receive God's love. Because God's true love is absolutely unconditional, reckless. God's love is. And when I understood God loved me, my dirtball, dirtiest, drug addict mess, God loved me. And I received, I didn't, I didn't just think it, I didn't have a thought, I went and told it. I received it. When I received God loved me, whoo, something happened to me. And I started to love me. And I was unlovable. And I know you felt like you were too. And, and when I started to love me, things started to change. And I was able, a little bit at a time, because it didn't happen all at once. Boom, poof, there's the love master, right? I didn't become the love master. Well, I thought I was, you know, <laughs> different type of love though. <laughs> I think that's called the lust master. I started to love people genuinely a little bit at a time and things started to change. I would do things unconditionally and just for no good reason, just for be better for them. So I ask you today, when you tell someone you love them, what do you mean? When someone tells you they love you, what do you think they mean? I want to tell you about four types of love tonight that are biblical and give you an understanding of different types of love. Show you a short video. Give me the first uh, type of love. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> nope, that's not it either. Go on. It's to the love stuff, man. The uh, Eros, I think. It's called Eros. Get that off of there. You're ruining my service. No, we'll see him in a minute too. They've got it all out of order. Don't worry, it's my fault. But I still love you. Okay. So what is eros love in the Bible? There's four types of love, okay? The first one is eros. Listen to this. The word eros. The first word is eros from which we get the English word erotic. Ooh. Eros was the word often used to express sexual love or the feelings of arousal that are shared between people who are physically attached to one another. The word was also used as the name of the Greek god of love, Eros. The Romans called him Cupid. By New Testament times, the word had become so debased by the culture that it is not used even once in the entire New Testament. So there is... One translation of the word, see, love means a whole lot of different things. I'm going to give you four definitions of it. There's eros love, and, that, and, and that's proper and it's right, yeah, especially for marriage. There should be an eros love, a sexual, physical attraction. And many times we, we tell people, I think this is a problem, that for me, a lot of my life, I would say, I love you, and that's what I was talking about. I love you because we had sex together. We have now laid down together. I love you. And many of you have done it too. God, y'all are so lying right now. This whole crowd should be going, oh, God, he's talking about me, right? <laughs> Don't worry, Roger, I'm not preaching at you tonight. <laughs> okay. My, my buddy told me tonight, I don't need to come to that service. I know all about this. You know, he's teasing me earlier. I'm like, come tonight. This is for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And uh, so many times I think what we said, when we said love, we said, you know, really what you meant was I lust you. And really, it could have been said just like that and been honest and deliberate about it, right? 
When my old sponsor's uh, uh, good friend, Jim, James G., he used to say, I thank God today I didn't have to put a drink, drug, or another person in me. Right? Because he got to the point, he understood that having a relationship and sexual relation with another person was so similar to taking a drink or a drug, and I believe it is. As a matter of fact, I believe this, it's more powerful than a drink or a drug. There is, a, there is an attachment that comes when you have sexual relations that's bigger than you understand. As a matter of fact, that's why God said what Adam and Eve were and He said two would be, come together and become one flesh. There is a bonding that takes place. There's a real soul tie, and I've talked about this a while back. I don't want to preach on that whole part, but I'm telling you, there's a connection that takes place with, with sex that you are not set up for that will cause you to fail and you don't even understand. That's why God intended it for marriage only. I'm not preaching it, you guys. Now, oh, don't have sex. I'm just telling you, you are going to wreck yourself when you do. That's why I'm asking you to wait. I'm not asking you to wait because it's a religion or something like that. Oh, don't have fun. I know it feels good. Don't do it. I'm telling you, you're going to wreck yourself emotionally and harm other people emotionally. That we weren't set up to do it. It's biblical. You just weren't. Okay? I'm not going to say I never did it. Yeah, how about that? Give me the next one. No, go, go to the next one. I want to use that last. Okay. Storge is, is the way it's pronounced. It looks like storage, right? Storge, the Greek word describes family love. This is your family love. The affectionate bond that develops naturally between parents, children, and brothers and sisters. Now, we develop that inside the bonds and the rooms of recovery, don't we? Many times, I think there's many people in my life right now that are as close or closer to me than blood family ever has been. What do you know about that? Does that ring true to any of you? Has anybody developed any brotherhoods or sisterhoods, bonds inside of this program that you know you have found a family that wasn't blood, right? And I think that's this type of love. So there, there's, a, there's a brotherly family love that takes place. That's the second type, all right? Give me the other one. Philia, which is philos, phileos is the way it's really pronounced, or I've always seen it as, which is, comes from like uh, Philadelphia, which is brotherly love, right? It says, which forms part of the words philosophy, love of wisdom, and philanthropy, love of fellow man. This word speaks of the warm affection it shared between friends, whereas eros is more closely associated with the libido, philia is associated with the heart. We feel love for our friends and family, obviously not in an erotic sense, but in the sense of being kind and affectionate. So that's the third kind, right? Give me the last one. This is called agape. And agape is the godly love. Agape, agape is God's love. True, pure, unadulterated, unconditional, reckless, will run you down and love you when you are unlovable. That's what agape is. None of us can ever, ever truly show this unless it's God through you. Now, if you're a believer tonight and you believe Jesus died for you, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you are capable of some of this. We don't act like it a lot of times in our humanity. He did so and so. Love him anyway. Somebody loved you anyway. Right? Who are you to keep holding that stuff against somebody and somebody loved you in your mess? Right? We get sober for about 90 days and become the older brother in the prodigal son story and start judging people. Right? Like, they ain't doing it right. Well, neither did you. And, and, and who is you that you're doing it so right now? Right? You know what I'm saying? Right? And so some of us really need to understand what agape love is and start receiving the love of God so you can give it. Amen? Agape is the highest of the four types of love in the Bible, and the term defines God's immeasurable, incomparable love for humankind. It is the divine love that comes from God. Agape love is perfect, unconditional, sacrificial, and pure. Typically defined as the self-sacrificing love. This is the love that moves people into action and looks out for the well-being of others. I'm going to stop right there. That's what true love should be. What can I do to make your life better? Not, not I love you because you make my life better. 
That's called manipulation, guys, and I did it most of my life. That's not what love is. And so tonight, I'm just giving you an understanding of what true love is and how to start living your lives. Amen? Amen. So let's transition a little bit for a minute about this uh, hostage situations, you know. And we start to date, and we're, we're, we don't truly under, receive God's love yet. We haven't truly started to love ourselves yet. And we try to start dating, and none of us know how to date and not fornicate, Right? We start dating on Monday by Friday, we getting it in, right? Yeah. Apparently, y'all got dirty minds because getting it in means something to y'all. I wasn't even talking about that, or was I? Right? And so we attempt to say that, you know, we're dating, right? Good, give me that other slide about situationships. What is a situationship? I love this. A situationship is an entertaining but complicated in-between phase of being in more than friends with benefits, but also an arrangement that deems you to be less than official relationship partners without a label, where two people haven't committed to being anything official for specific reasons. These people are usually confused on what they really have with each other. See that word confused? So they just go with the flow until someone drowns, All right? Give me the next one. Situationships, let's just chill, have sex and be confused on the fact of we're not together, but have an official, but we have official emotions for each other. See that confused? Let's just chill, have sex and be confused. You guys said you was in a relationship and you're really in a situationship. Give me the next one. He about to ruin your life with a situationship for two years. What does a man mean when he says you're mine, but you're not his girlfriend? Right. This is some of the stuff I'm talking about where, oh, you guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? This is really, truly ringing true, isn't it? Right. As funny as this is, it's sad that because some of us all want love, but the truth is love is scary. See, love is, I got to make myself vulnerable where you can absolutely wreck my life. So instead of love, what we call love, it's really connection because most of us are scared of love, aren't we? Somewhere in the past, we've been hurt and we've now set up these walls trying to protect ourselves, and so we just do this other stuff and invariably end up in a hostage situation, right? Does anybody know what I mean by taking hostages? Everybody's so scared to raise their hand right now. All right. I want to give you an example. This, this great old rabbi does this. It's called fish love. Give me that video, Joe. Love is a word that An external love is not on what I'm going to get, but what I'm going to give. We had an ethicist, Rabbi Dessler, who said the people make a serious mistake in thinking 
that you give to those whom you love? And the answer is, the real answer is, you love those to whom you give. And his point is, if I give something to you, I've invested myself in you, right? And since self-love is a given, everybody loves themselves, now that part of me has become in you, right, there's part of me in you that I love. Right? So true love is a love of giving, not a love of receiving. Do you love fish love? I love the fish. Do you? <laughs> that's why you took it out, cooked it, and boiled it, right? Because you love it, right? And that's what we do to each other, isn't it? Right? I love you, right? So I want to tell you, and so part of this whole training and understanding that I learned, I finally learned about love, that I learned there are six ways, six, to give and receive love. Anybody ever heard about this? There's a book out, real famous stuff called The Five Love Language. I learned it's six, by the way. I'll tell you the sixth one in a second. And I truly, I love that the sixth one's involved in the teaching that I heard because I think it's the missing piece. But it's called The Five Love Language. And they finally developed and said there, that me and you, many of us, we have learned and developed and adapt. There are only six real ways that we give or receive love. Let me tell them to you. Okay. So the first one is, by the way, you, there's an acronym I made for this. It's called Teams Q, T E A M S Q. The first one is touching, physical, physical touch, right? That's why some of us guys, you'll see us, I got to get you in the head and give you a, a noogie, right? That's part of what we, we like as the camaraderie of hitting, you know, hitting around on each other. And there's something about touch for, for many of us guys in a relationship, physical touch is a big thing. Right? Physical touch. That's why with your child, you sometimes, you know, you love to hold your child. Or when you come in close contact with a relative you haven't seen for so long, you got to grab them and give them a hug. There's something about physical touch. The, the, a need gets met like no other through physical touch. You guys agree? Right. Sex is included in that, by the way. We just use it and wreck ourselves with it. The second one is encouragement for who they are regardless. We will encourage someone for who they are regardless. That there are many times that you don't deserve encouragement from someone, but how about this? Do you remember just trying to get sober and in the very beginning you didn't deserve nothing from no one? And, and I love this about our program, how we cheer each other on. Man, you could do it. Come on, you got this. It's your first day. I know you could do it, man. Right, and they're talking about, hell, I can't get through 60 days. That farm too much. I'm like, I know, bro, but you can do it. You know, my, my sponsor always told me, he said, you can't eat an elephant. He said, but you can one bite at a time. And how we encourage each other to just get through the day, just get through this next hour, get through the afternoon, get through this moment, and how we encourage each other when we don't even deserve it, right? And that's real love. It's so encouragement for who they are regardless, right? And the, that's the E. And then the third one is affirmation. Ooh, I love me some affirmation. You know what I mean by affirmation, right? You build someone up. You're doing good, baby. That's right. Jimmy J and I talk about, we always had a, a term called attaboys. Attaboy rock, right? I love me some attaboys, right? Who loves some attaboys, right? Atta girl, right? Who loves some atta girls, attaboys, right? Come on, that guy. I love, don't tell me how good I am, right? Look what you did. Yeah, that's pricey. Right? Build me up. I love affirmation, right? Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he tell me I was doing very good. My boss doesn't appreciate me, and they said, right? <laughs> affirmation. Number four, the M is material gifts. Gifts, material, it's going to take something, right? A lot of, um, especially women, you all love some gifts. Give me something like diamonds, flowers, right? The new house, the car, material, dresses, shoes, oh, shoes, oh. Y'all women love some shoes. I've seen the pictures, right? You dudes. Y'all see the new flat bill I got, right? It fit just right, right? New Jersey, right? 
Material gifts. We love some material gifts, don't we? Man, early sobriety, somebody show up with a bag of something, boy, we good. <laughs> he got me some socks and underwear. I'm, <laughs> church brought them. <laughs> we love some material gifts, man. Especially in the beginning, you ain't got nothing. Oh, give me an old pair of tennis shoes. We good, man. You see them shoes he got me right there? See? You, know, you know how we do, you know. Material gifts. The fifth one is service free. What can I do to show it? Service, right? The best example I have of that is you used to use off your mother so much. Can I get $40, pay my phone bill? Mom, I'm dying out here. Can you just buy me a pizza? Right? Go bag up her leaves and take her trash out and don't ask for nothing. Service for free. What can I do just to show it? Right? We call them in early, early recovery. It's called spiritual dollars, baby. Well, yeah, y'all know what it is. Go get you some spiritual dollars. That means giving back to your community and people around you service for free. That is building up your spiritual bank account, right? Service free. How, hey, what can I do to show it? And then the number six is quality time. Can we just be together, right? Um, my wife loves for me to just be in the room with her. Just, just be there, right? I may be playing on my phone. She may say, get off your phone a little bit, but she'd be on Grey's Anatomy anyway, so I don't know. You know. <laughs> That's the newest thing. We, we binge why. We got the stupid fire stick, bro. You ain't got no commercials, man. You watch for days, right? <laughs> so the, the last one is um, quality time to just be together, right? You can be on your phone riding down the road. We love to spend time together. I know that's one of her big things. We can just go drive and go looking at homes we could not afford and go get a, a cup of dollar ice cream and have the best time together. I'm not kidding, man. We go get a cup of dollar ice cream, drive around, look at them big home. See that one right there? Yeah, that ain't so nice. You know? <laughs> we be judging the expensive homes, you know? <laughs> and so we have a great time with that, with just quality time. So remember the six ways to give and receive love are teams cue, touching, physical, encouragement, which was the sixth, by the way, in the five love language, the encouragement's not there. And then uh, uh, affirmation, material gifts, service, free, quality time. Now, let me explain why this is so important. My wife loves because see, I used her and manipulated and cheated her and stole from her so much. She loves for me to give her material gifts. She also loves quality time. I do not receive love by either of those ways. I personally love physical touch and affirmation. So my intent will be try to love my wife by trying to physically touch her and trying to tell her good thing. Oh, you so good, baby. Let me touch you. <laughs> and, and she's going, I don't even like it. You know, and I'm going, you, and, and here, and I'm going, you don't love me. Right. What, what is the matter? Why do get we, you know, and, and, and my wife's going, no, so, so capture this. She receives love by material gifts and quality time. I receive love by physical touch and affirmation mostly. Now we can give all six, but I primarily receive those two ways. So I would intend to try to love her by the way I like to receive love and it's so backwards. I had to learn that my wife loves material gifts and quality time. So let me just tell you, she won't, she won't tell you this. You know, I do it all wrong, you know how our wives are, yeah. She is balled out with more rings than she could wear on her fingers. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, since I come home from prison, I don't play around. I, she is balled out. <laughs> no, listen, I should have insurance on this stuff. It, 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 she is. Now, now, I don't pay retail for nothing. Every single one of them is from a pawn shop almost. <laughs> we are frugal. She would prefer me to buy them that way, by the way, and get a better deal. But, but listen, she is balled out out with so many rings she can't even wear them. I give her material gifts. I also spend quite a bit of quality time with her every evening. And I've got to the point where I enjoy it and we're best friends. 
So I have learned to attempt, at least, to love her the way she wants to be loved, not how I want to be loved. And I'm asking you about your own very life. When you go to, go to love your child, let's think of that. Your child, you may want to go do this or that. And that's what you think love is. And your child probably, if they're like mine, just want you. You want to go spend money on them because you've been absent for so long in your life. Like I, that's what I do with some of my kids, right? You're, the kid just wants you. And so you're trying to love them and show them love and they're not receiving it because that's not the way they receive love or need your love. Listen, when I learned this, oh, my life changed, right? Does this make sense? This adding up a little bit? And so I'm asking you tonight, when you now go to love somebody, are you gonna, could you, listen, I'll have 15 of you tonight messing with me. What are those six ways, right? So it, if, if, if you, any of you had any sense and you could get to me, 200 of you would go, send me those six things. I need to learn this. Because if you wanna truly love somebody, you're gonna investigate them. You may even tell them about this and ask them, how would you prefer to receive love so you could learn it, so you could start loving them the way they need loved instead of you trying to love them the way you wanna love? Because it wasn't about you, it's supposed to be about them. Amen? It's time that we stop making messes of this and truly learn what love is. And if you'll learn what love is, that comes from God, you'll learn to love you. Once you learn to love you, it's game changer, right? Because you'll care so much about you, you won't want to put a drink or you won't want to put a drug in you. You'll learn to truly love others and your life will get better. Amen. Amen. Now, I got to tell you, ladies, there's a story in the Bible called Ruth. Yeah. And Ruth had a very, very, very wealthy guy named Boaz. And she did it right. She didn't lay down and sleep with him. She, I mean, she kicked it and weighed it and she lived it properly. And she waited on her Boaz. And so I'm asking you ladies tonight, can you wait on the proper man in your life? Give me that last slide, bro, as I close down here. Listen to this. To all you girls who are in a hurry to have a boyfriend or get married, a piece of biblical advice. Ruth patiently waited for her mate Boaz. While you're waiting on your Boaz, don't settle for any of his relatives. Broke ass, Poaz, lion ass, cheating ass, dumb ass. Oh, you know drunk ass. Cheap ass, locked up ass. That used to be me. Good for nothing ass. Lazy ass. And especially his third cousin beating your ass. So wait on your bow ass and make sure he respect your ass. Now, there's a very famous preacher that did this before me, so I'm not owning that, right? Did you guys receive that tonight? Do you understand a little more? Do you understand a little more about what love is? Love, true, true love comes from the Father. And he did that through sending his son Jesus to die for us, amen? amen. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come back to you tonight as we have such fun services and make innuendos and funnies out of things that Lord God tonight, let us not forget that, that we settled on learning what love was and that true love comes from you, Father. And that because we receive it, we would wait on our mate. And because we receive it, we would learn to love ourselves so importantly that we would give it away to others because that's all you ever wanted was to love us so much that we've so received it, we give it back to you and others. We so thank you tonight, Lord God. I pray over every man and woman here and over this service, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, Amen. see you guys next Monday. Oh, oh. I, I, I'll grab them. I got to get with.